video we are going to discuss about a very common genetic entity that is down syndrome so down syndrome is a condition where there are three copies of chromosome 21 okay three copies of chromosome 21 so normally in our body we have two copies of each of the chromosomes like chromosome 1 chromosome 2 chromosome 3 and so on okay but if we have three copies of chromosome 21 that condition is called trisomy 21 and that is an abnormal condition which is known as down syndrome okay so there are some risk factors for down syndrome so one of them is maternal age as the mother's age increases the risk of having a baby with down syndrome also increases so as you can see if the mother's age is around 20 years the risk of having a baby with down syndrome is only about 1 in 1500 but as the mother's age goes on progressing so if the mother's age is 45 years then the risk or incidence of having a baby with down syndrome is almost 1 in 30 Apart from that, if a couple already has a child with Down syndrome and they are carriers of any translocation of this chromosome 21 with some other chromosome, then there is an increased risk of Down syndrome in the next pregnancy as well. Okay. Now, how to recognize a child with Down syndrome clinically? Now, you can make out that there is some abnormality in the face of this child. Okay. It does not look like a, what the face of a normal individual looks like. So what are those abnormalities? If we try to point out the salient abnormalities or the salient features which will help you diagnose this condition are, can you appreciate the depressed nasal bridge? It looks that the bridge of the nose is depressed. Okay. Depressed nasal bridge. If you appreciate closely, you can notice there is a slant in the eyes. The eyes are slanting like this. Instead of being horizontal, there is a slant of the eyes, right? Apart from that, there are low set and dysplastic ears can be there. There can be a protruding tongue. They have short neck. They have, you know, if you look at these individuals from behind, they can have something known as flat occiput. Their occiput is like really flat. And that also helps in, you know, uh, identifying this condition. Apart from that, if the eye examination is done, there can be some abnormalities which can be visualized like brush field spots and iris. Okay, if you look at their hands, their little finger is usually short and curved, which is known as clinodactyly. So that can be present. There can be, you know, all of us look at your own hands, you have usually two transverse palmar creases. But if there is a single transverse palmar crease running from one end to another, that is called a semian crease, okay, which can also be seen in this condition. Then you can appreciate the increased gap between the great toe and the rest of the toes, which is known as sandal gap, okay, sandal gap. So these are some features by which readily looking at the baby, you can make out that probably the baby is suffering from Down syndrome. Okay. Now there are some associated features in this condition as well, apart from the facial abnormalities that we discussed. So these childs often have delayed development and intellectual disability. So their IQ is usually less compared to normal individuals of their age. Okay. So there is intellectual disability of varying severity. Apart from that, congenital hypothyroidism is very commonly associated with Down syndrome and you have to monitor for it continuously okay, and treat it if present. So congenital hypothyroidism is a very important and commonly associated condition with this. Apart from that, there can be congenital heart diseases. Okay, Congenital heart diseases like endocardial cushion defect. Okay ventricular septal defect, atrial septal defect, PDA, tetralogy of fallow, any of the congenital heart diseases may be associated. Almost 50% of babies with Down syndrome have some congenital heart disease. Okay. There can be associated behavioral problems. Okay. Sometimes these individuals have some behavioral problems and they are, you know, not uh, really uh, able to mingle with the rest of the peers of their age sometimes, okay? And they can have some, you know, uh, irritability and some behavioral issues can be there which need to be tackled, right? Apart from that, they can have, there's also increased risk of having celiac disease, okay? So these are some of the commonly associated conditions with Down syndrome for which you have to be vigilant, right? Now, how to confirm the diagnosis of Down syndrome? So looking at the baby, you got an idea that probably this child is suffering from Down syndrome, but how do you confirm it? 
so for confirming the diagnosis using the blood of the individual you can do some investigations like the karyotype okay where you can visualize all the chromosomes of the body or there can be an investigation which is called fish that is fluorescent in c2 hybridization fluorescent in c2 hybridization where we can specifically using fluorescent tags we can identify whether three copies of chromosome 21 are there or not in that individual okay so using the blood of the child you can do these for the diagnosis now this is how a karyotype in down syndrome looks like so can you appreciate that for chromosome 1 chromosome 2 3 4 and so on there are two copies of each chromosome right and what else you can see is there are two copies of the x chromosome so this is a girl with xx okay and if there was one copy of x and one copy of y it would have been a boy so this is a girl now if you look closely at this karyotype you can see that there are three copies of chromosome 21 so this condition is trisomy 21 three copies of chromosome 21 are there so instead of total number of chromosomes which should be normally 46 in an individual this is the total number of chromosome here is 47 and there is xx that means this is a girl and there is an extra chromosome 21 giving rise to down syndrome here right now if you look at this picture you can see that the red colored fluorescent dyes have been used to tag chromosome 21 so you can see in each cell there are three copies of chromosome 21 as against two copies of chromosome 13 right so you can see three copies of chromosome 21 in each cell again indicating down syndrome this is a picture of fish fluorescent in c2 hybridization that we talked about right now how to manage children with down syndrome unfortunately there is no magical drug that is going to cure this condition so what is important is to engage these children in occupational therapy and physiotherapy okay that will help them you know learn things so occupational therapy physiotherapy so physiotherapy occupational therapy right early stimulation so you have to stimulate these children early so their family members have to make extra efforts so that you know these children are able to learn things and they are able to do activities of daily living themselves and some of them can engage in certain vocational activities and they can you know uh, pass their time meaningfully so physiotherapy occupational therapy early stimulation and you know identification and treatment of behavioral disorders if any so behavioral therapy is also often required for these individuals apart from that identification and management of comorbidities is also very very important okay identification and treatment of comorbidities right some of the comorbidities we already mentioned right so what should be done on the follow up of these babies so as like any individual any child you are following up you will assess the growth at each visit down syndrome specific growth charts are available because these children are not expected to grow as like the normal children so you can use down syndrome appropriate growth charts to monitor their growth okay and you will do a behavioral assessment at each visit to see if there are any behavioral problems that need to be addressed you need to look at the thyroid profile at regular intervals to identify congenital hypothyroidism. So you need to, you know, assess their thyroid hormone level at, so T4, TSH levels you have to assess regularly in order to have an idea whether they are suffering from congenital hypothyroidism and institute management if that is there. An echocardiogram needs to be done at regular intervals to screen for congenital heart diseases. Vision and hearing assessment needs to be done because these are some common problems which may be there in these individuals. So you have to do vision and hearing assessment, right? Apart from that, you have to look for some commonly associated disorders which can be there like celiac disease is common. So you will do anti-TTG IgA in these individuals to look for them. Now these children also have increased risk of having atlantoaxial instability. So, you know, at three to five years of age or if you, the child is being planned to engage in any contact sports or if the child is having some neurological symptoms, you have to do the cervical spine x-ray in full flexion and full extension to look for atlantoaxial instability, right? And these children also have, you know, risk of having transient myeloproliferative disorder or acute leukemias. So, you have to do their complete blood counts at regular intervals, okay? So these are some of the things that you will do while following up these individuals. Now, what is the risk of recurrence if a couple already has a child with Down syndrome? 
Now, if the karyotype of the couple is normal, okay, if the both the parents are having normal karyotype, then there is no increased risk in the next pregnancy. It is almost same as that in the general population. But if any of the parents is carrier of a translocation, okay, of any chromosome with chromosome 21, then there is an increased risk. You can see there is a risk of 10 to 50, up to 10 to 15 percent in the next pregnancy. But if the couple, any of the, uh, you know, parents are a carrier of translocation of chromosome 21 with 21, there is a 100% risk that all the babies born in the next pregnancy are going to have Down syndrome. So if a child is identified having Down syndrome, having a translocation and their parent's stereotype is also abnormal, then definitely there is an increased risk of having a child with Down syndrome in the next pregnancy. Okay. Is it possible to diagnose this severe condition where which has you know lifelong implications before the affected child is born? Yes, it is very much possible and should be offered to each and every couple. Okay. So how do you do prenatal screening or diagnosis for Down syndrome? Now there are some methods to do it. One is you can do the antenatal ultrasound which can give you some markers which can be suggestive. So antenatal ultrasound is one. Then mother's blood can be taken and some biochemical tests can be run which can give you a whether that you know that mother or that couple has an increased risk of having a child with Down syndrome. So ultrasound, some biochemical markers, there is something called non-invasive prenatal screening which can be done using maternal blood. And finally the confirmatory test is by invasive investigations okay invasive or confirmatory tests where you have to take a fetal sample so when the mother is pregnant so a needle has is to be introduced in the uterus and a sample has to be taken from the fetus and that should be subjected to the karyotype so invasive confirmatory test is the fetal karyotype right so markers some markers on antenatal ultrasound as early in the first trimester you can get increased nuchal thickness so increased thickness of the area around the neck of the baby so that is called nuchal thickness so you can get increased nuchal thickness on the first trimester ultrasound so you know so early in the pregnancy you can detect it so in the first trimester you can get increased nuchal thickness the nuchal thickness can be more than three millimeter if it is more than three millimeter it is suggestive of some abnormality like down syndrome okay Apart from that, they can be, you know, absent nasal bones, short femur, they also give some clues, though they are non-specific. Absent nasal bones, short femur, okay, there can be some, you know, congenital heart disease which may be detected and so on. Biochemical screening for Down syndrome, again in the first trimester, you use markers like beta HCG and PAPA, okay. In the second trimester, there is the triple test and the quadruple test that is used. The triple test includes markers like beta HCG, okay, uh, alpha fetoprotein and unconjugated estriol, right. So these are done using mother's blood and you can do a quadruple test which has four markers, the all the three markers of triple test plus another marker that is known as inhibin, right. And there is an integrated test also which takes into account the mother's age, the nuchal thickness, the PAPA levels and the quadruple test of the second trimester and gives you an integrated risk of whether there is increased risk of having Down syndrome baby or not. So there is an integrated test as well that takes into account all the factors and it is the most sensitive screening test amongst these, right? There is something called non-invasive prenatal screening in which you can analyze the fetal, the cell-free fetal DNA from maternal blood. So there is some fetal DNA which is in circulation in mother's blood. So using mother's blood, you can identify the cell-free fetal DNA and we can find out whether trisomy 21 is present in that or not. So cell-free fetal DNA in maternal blood can be used for this non-invasive prenatal screening for Down syndrome and other aneuploidies. Invasive prenatal testing, as we already mentioned, it can be done by introducing a needle in the uterus of the mother when she is pregnant and taking the fetal sample and subjecting it to fetal karyotype. Okay. So there are some methods to do it. If the mother is coming early on in pregnancy, chorionic villus sampling can be done. Later in pregnancy, if she is coming, amniocentesis can be done. Okay. Some amniotic fluid can be taken. And further later, even chordocentesis can also be done where directly fetal blood sample can be taken to be analyzed by karyotype. Now, prognosis of Down syndrome. 
if you talk about the life expectancy if good supportive care is given and all the comorbidities are addressed they usually have a life expectancy of around 50 to 55 years right so they are usually able to do their activities of daily living they are able to communicate with their parents peers and caregivers okay and they are able to engage in meaningful activities so some of the skills they can be good at and they can some can be good at music some can be good at you know doing some other uh, skills so you have to identify those skills and you have to you know uh, channelize these individuals in the right direction nevertheless they do have a component of intellectual disability so a legal guardian should be appointed for these individuals who can take care of the major decisions okay major health related or financial or other legal decisions they might need some help so we as society our role is to extend support to all such individuals with down syndrome so that you know they can also lead a life which they deserve a life where they do not have to depend on everyone and they are able to you know do their activities of daily living themselves and also engage in other meaningful activities so that they are not a burden for this society so this world down syndrome day let us promise ourselves to help out these individuals and also spread awareness that this condition can be identified early in pregnancy okay and we can prevent the further birth of individuals having this syndrome with life long huge implications so one is spreading awareness about its prevention and another aspect of course friends is to extend support to these individuals and the families having kids who have down syndrome because they are going through a lot and they you know need to put in that extra effort go that extra mile to ensure that these children can keep up with the rest of the society so this is dr minakshi signing off and this is a very important disorder the a very important lifelong condition i would say down syndrome about which all of us must be aware thank you